In this video we're going to show you how to connect your PTZ camera, that's an analog camera, using video power balance with PTZ data control on them to your uh, PTZ controller. Here we have our analog PTZ IR10, it's our newer mini PTZ camera and it is an analog camera like I said and it has a BNC video out which is here, a DC 12 volt power jack and your RS-45 leads. The green is for Earth, and the label here actually tells you what each lead stands for. The yellow is RS-45 positive, and the orange is RS-45 negative. It's very important you uh, understand that because serial data is dependent on polarity. The positive is also called A, and the negative is also called B. Now to connect your PTZ to your controller or your DVR, you could use the traditional wiring route of using Siamese RG59 and two lead wire with an additional two lead wire. But these video power balance and with power PTZ data make it very easy to connect your camera. So on these balance you've got a BNC for video. You have two male and female power jacks, so it doesn't really matter. It's arbitrary which one you use on which end. So they all, they're both identical. And then you've got the RS-45 for data. The stripe lead is positive, by the way. So what I'm going to do is, it was very arbitrary on which one I chose, and I'm going to be using this one on the camera side and this one on the PTZ end. And I'm going to show you how to connect the wires. So connect the video here to the video female on the camera, and then connect the power, this uh, power jack, the male end, to the female power end on the camera, and connect these two RS-45 leads to the RS-45 leads on the camera matching the polarity. So now, what we did in order to connect our balance to our camera, we use our DC power terminals that we sell. And you could use any splicing device you want, but in this case, this makes it easy to use interconnects. So we put a female DC power terminal here, and a male power DC terminal here. Although I call them power, they can be used for any two lead wire that you want to make a connection on. And it makes it a really snap connection. And that's it. And you can wrap some electrical tape over this if you have the camera mounted outdoors. But the preferred way is either to have the wire inside the wall or put this into a junction box to protect it from the elements. Let's connect the RS-485 on the PTZ controller. We have another video that shows you how to connect it here, but just for simplicity's sakes, on the back of your PTZ controller, there are going to be two kinds of inputs. In ours, there's an RS-485 and an RS-422. The PTZ data control is RS-485, and in this case, it's on the left-hand side, and it's labeled A and B. And all I'm going to do is take the positive, which is a stripe lead, and the negative, and just basically insert it into this DC block. So now I have my video bail in here connected to the RS-485 input. And again, the stripe lead is positive or A, and the other one is negative or B. On the other end, my other video bail in, I have it connected to the camera. In this case, the yellow lead on my camera is positive and the orange lead is negative. If you happen to be using our power terminals, make sure you maintain polarity. There are small indentations, as you can see, on the um, terminals here, which label positive and negative on there. If you get this wrong, this is a very crucial part, and your PTZ will turn on and give you video, but will not allow you uh, any sort of data control. And this is the first element that you need to troubleshoot when you have troubles with moving your PTZ camera. Once your RS-485 is connected, now let's connect the other connections on the camera. This is your BNC video. I'm going to connect it to the BNC on the video bail-in. Now for power, I will connect the male power end into the female DC power end of the camera. Although these PTZ bail-ins can be used with 24 volt, we usually only recommend them for 12 volt runs carrying 3 amp to 5 amp current or 1 amp to 5 amp current and no more than 100 feet just to make sure there is no uh, power loss. Now the reason for using these video balance is if you wanted to run an X amount of length of wire these video balance make it very easy. 
you can put it in, in a Cat5 or a Cat6 cable depending on the length of your run and just snap it in. So in this case I have a short run and all I did was just snap it in and I'm done. Right now I have video and power and data hooked up on my PTZ here and my data is hooked up on my PTZ controller. The only part left now is to connect the video to my DVR and the power to its power supply for the camera. And of course I need to connect a power supply to my PTZ controller. Now your wire, you can change this wire to even up to 100 foot Cat6 cable. For anything over 50 feet, we recommend using a Cat6 cable that's full copper or bare copper as they call it. Although these Cat5 wires are not um, meant for outdoor use, you can easily enclose them in a conduit and protect them from the elements. All right, now we're going to connect the controller end of the video balance to our DVR. So in this setup, we have now completed the RS-485 connection to the PTZ controller. I'm gonna now connect the video to my DVR and I have it connected over here on port eight. And then I'm gonna connect the power to the camera. So keep in mind, this particular camera uses a, a higher amp power supply that is three amps. And I'm gonna connect it here. And as I do this, I can actually see my PTZ camera start moving. I'm gonna have the camera out of frame just so that I can show you in more detail what I'm doing here. Now, once the power is connected and the video is connected, um, you should start seeing video from your camera. It takes a few moments for the camera to boot up and show video. When it turns on, you have to make sure your ID and baud rate are uh, correct for the PTZ and for the controller to be able to talk to each other. They have to be on the same baud rate. And in this case, our baud rate on the, P on the controller is 2400. And the protocol is Pelco D. So if you see auto or Pelco D on your on-screen display screen, it's matching, it's Pelco D. And in this case, our baud rate of 2400 on the controller matches that of the default baud rate on our camera. Now, when we try to move our controller right now, we don't see anything happening on our screen, as you see in the picture-in-picture uh, -picture view here. Now what I'm gonna do is type in the correct um, ID number for my PTZ, which is 005. I'm gonna zoom in to show you a little bit better. So now I have typed in an ID of 005 in here by pressing 00 and 5, and then I'm gonna press cam. That changes the cam ID that I'm going to control to 005. The monitor ID is the ID of this controller. It's irrelevant at this point. So now I'm going to actually move the PTZ and you can see in the picture in picture view, it's actually rotating. And I'm able to now zoom in. I have this holding in my hand, so there's a little bit of a shake. But now you can see I can actually move in and control my PTZ, and that's all it takes. So this is how easy it becomes when you're using a PTZ balen and a joystick. In the next segment, I'm gonna show you how to do the same and simply just connect it to the PTZ controls on the back of your DVR. Here is the crucial part, the RS-485 connections, the positive and the negative, the stripe one being positive, the other one being negative. Positive is also A and negative is B. All I need to do in order to connect my PTZ now to my DVR, move these two wires to the ports here. A is positive, B is negative. This is for RS-485. This DVR happens to have a separate alarm block. Depending on the model of your DVR, it may or may not have it. But all of our DVRs have A positive and B negative. So now in order to connect the PTZ to my RS-485 on the back of the DVR, I'm gonna take the positive and negative wires. So this is the stripe one being positive, and I'm going to connect them in here to the A and B ports on the back of the DVR. The A is positive, B is negative. So all I need to do is just push the orange portion in and then slide this wire in. Try to do this on video with a pair of pliers and you're trying to see what I'm exactly doing. It's kind of hard, but it should be a secure connection. If your wire comes out just like that, that means you don't have a secure connection. So now I've got my wire connected and if I pull on it, it's not coming out easily. So that means it's a good taut connection and 
secure. Make sure your wires are in like that, otherwise you're gonna have issues with um, transmission of serial data over your RS-45. Every little detail here, it's very crucial in making sure your PTZ works successfully. Despite, besides just the uh, video and power connections, to actually be able to move the PTZ requires a proper connection on the RS-45. So I'm pulling on these a little bit and they're not coming out, which is a good sign. So I've got good connections here. Now I'm going to plug my camera back into power. So here my OSD menu tells me that I have on protocol auto ID of 5 and COM of 2400. So all I need to do is basically go into main menu, log in. The default username and password is the same. The user and password are the same for So for example, if you have an 8.8 user, the password is 6.8. Admin user, password is admin. And then uh, you need to go to your PTZ settings. In this case, I have my camera connected on channel one. I can see that being here on cam one on the left-hand side. And what I'm gonna do is go to system and go to PTZ. And on channel one, I need to set PTZ type to be local control mode to be serial, protocol to be Pelco D, and then the address, this is the address that was showing up when the camera booted up, and it was 005 or as, as 5, and then the baud rate was 2400, and everything else I'm going to leave alone, and then hit apply, save. Now I'm, I'm going to right click and exit out, and all I'm going to do is right click and go to um, PTZ, and now I will be able to move my PTZ at command. So if your PTZ happens to be moving too fast, you can change the speed to 1 or 2 and then try then, and then it'll move in smaller increments. And then here the zoom, zoom and the focus allow you to basically zoom in and out. And there are other features that are will be uh, you can explore on your own, but uh, here you can see that also it tells you what is the um, uh, zoom level your camera is currently at. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Thank you for watching.